A, B, C, D is a parallel graph. If the measurement of angle C, D, A is 64, then what is the measure of angle D, A, B? So we notice that we have this angle and we have this angle. In a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. So you have 64 degrees plus X, which is this angle right here, equals 180. So what you have to do is you have to subtract 180 minus 64. It will be 116 degrees. So the key is that consecutive angles are supplementary in a parallelogram. ABCD is a parallelogram. If the measure of angle ABC is 51, that's 51 degrees. What is the measure of angle CDA, which is this angle here? Also, opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So this will be 51 degrees. So remember that the key is that the opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. L, M, N, O is a parallelogram. N, M is x plus 7, and OL is 2x plus 5, and it says find the value of x, so we know that the opposite sides are going to be congruent, so we have 2x plus 5 equals x plus 7. We subtract x from both sides, so we have x plus 5 equals 7, so x equals 2, since I'll subtract 5 from both sides, and each side is going to be 9 units long nine units long. Number seven, we have ON is 9x minus 8, so this is 9x minus 8, and we know that LM is 8x plus 4. Uh, we have OL is 5y minus 6. We have OL is 5y minus 6. Okay, so this is wrong. OL is 5y minus 6, and M is x minus 6. Uh, what are the values of x and y? So we know that the opposite sides in a parallelogram are congruent. So we have 9x minus 8 equals 8x plus 4. We subtract 8x from both sides. You have x minus 8 equals 4. You add 8 to both sides, so x equals 12. So we know that x is 12, so now I can substitute into this equation or this expression. So we have 5y minus 6 equals 12 minus 6. So we have 5y minus 6 equals 6. You add 6 to both sides, so you have 5y equals 12 divided by 5, so you have 12 over 5. I went ahead and checked it, and it's correct. So uh, we're going to go to the next problem. In a rhombus, the measure of angle 1 is 3x. The measure of angle 2 is x plus y. And the measure of angle 3 to 30z, what is the value of each variable? Remember, in a rhombus, uh, the diagonals will be perpendicular. And if they're perpendicular, then we know that each of these are going to be a 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for angle 3, I have 3x equals 90. So for angle 1, to find angle 1, I'm going to have to divide by 3. So x equals 30. So x equals 30, and we know that ang angle 1 is 90 degrees. Uh, the measure of angle 3, I know that that's also going to be 90. So you have 30z uh, equals 90 divided by 30. So z is equal to 3. So we know that x is 30. We know that z is 30. And we know that the measure of angle 2 is uh, x plus y. So uh, we know that the measure of angle 2 is 90. So we have 90 equals x plus y. So it's 30 plus y. So we're going to subtract 30 from both sides. And we know that y has to equal to 60. So the key there is that we have the two diagonals that are, that are per, uh, perpendicular. And if they're perpendicular, they form 90 degree angles. And I said, each angle equal to 90, and I solved each of the variables. Number 11, find the measure of each numbered angles in the rhombus. The diagram is not to scale. So we know that a rhombus, all the sides are congruent. We know that the diagonals are also perpendicular. So we know that the measurement of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. 
We also know that the angles that are opposite in a, in a, in a, in a rhombus are congruent. And we know that the di diagonals also bisect the angle. So if this is 19 and this is 19, then this also here is 19. So each of them are 19. And this right here is perpendicular, so that's 90. So if I wanted to find angle 3, it would be 19 plus the measure of angle 3 plus 90 equals 180 degrees. So I have the measurement of angle 3 plus uh, 109 equals 180. Then what I do is I subtract 109 from both sides. So the measurement of angle 3 is equal to 71 degrees. So we know that uh, the measure of angle 1 is 90. We know that the measure of angle 3 is 71 degrees. And we know that the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 19 degrees. And the properties I used were that the diagonals are perpendicular and opposite angles are congruent and they also, the diagonals bisect each other's angles. In the given rectangle, we know that KM, which is the distance from K to M, is 9x plus 22. I know that LN is 89.5 and I know the diagonals in a rectangle are congruent. So you have 9x equals 89.5. You go ahead and subtract 22 from both sides. So we have 9x equals 67.5. And then our last step is to divide by 9. And we know that the value of x is equal to 7.5 or 7.5. LM is a bit segment of this, this parallelogram or this trapezoid. And we know that AB is 74. And we know that DC is 192. So to figure out the distance from L to M, you're going to get 74, the distance of A to B. And then you add the distance from D to C, which is 192, and then divide by 2. That is the mid-segment theorem for a quadrilateral. Therefore, the distance will be 1, 131. So to find the mid-segment, you're going to add AB, the distance of AB, plus DC. And that's how you find the mid-segment. Find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 3 in the kite. So we know the diagonals in the kite are, are going to be uh, perpendicular. And we know that they do bisect, the diagonals bisect the angles. So I know that it's the two diagonals are perpendicular. So automatically the measurement of angle 2 will be have to be 90. And you notice that angle A, this part is 24. So the measurement of angle one is also 24. So to find the measure of angle three, since I know the two lines are perpendicular, it's gonna be 24 plus 90 plus uh, the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. So you have, um, you have 114 degrees plus the measurement of angle three is equal to 180. Then you subtract 114 degrees from both sides. So we know that the measure of an angle three will have to be 66 degrees. Find the value of the variable and the lengths of each side for this kite. So we know that we have two X plus five equals X plus 11. So you have X equals six. You subtract X from both sides, subtract five from both sides, you get six. So I have Y minus three equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 6 in for x, so 6 plus 3, so you have y minus 3 equals 9, you add 3 to both sides, you have y equals 12, so the value of x is 6 and y is 12, so 12 minus 3 is 9, this is 9, uh, we have uh, x is 6, so this is 17, and this is 17. All I did is I substituted for X and Y to find the measurement of each side. In the diagram, figure RQTS is the image of DEFC after a rigid motion. So we have DE, segment DE, is going to be segment RQ in the other figure. One thing you have to notice, because we're going to use this diagram, it's going by twos. So you got to be careful because it says find the image C under the translation described by the rule t we have four units to the right and 10 units up of c so 
we have C, we're going to go four units to the right. So that's uh, two, four, and then we're going to go up 10. So it's going to be two. So I go over four. One, two, that's going to be four. I go up 10. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Uh, so it's going to be uh, negative three negative 3 comma 12 that's the location of c prime negative 3 12. what is a rule that describes a translation and we have a b c d to a prime b prime c prime d prime so i'm going to pick c if i go over four spaces because remember we're going up by two two four i'm going to the left so you're going to subtract four two and then halfway is going to be three so the rule is going to be you go to the left four and then you go up three for each of the points. The vertices are triangle P, which is negative four, eight, Q, which is negative three, negative two, and R, negative six, eight, are given. The vertices of a reflection over X equals zero. So what's going to happen is that this negative two, negative three, uh, negative two is going to be up here. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use red so this is negative uh negative three two so that's q prime r prime negative six one two three four five six seven negative six negative eight that's r prime p prime negative four p prime negative four negative eight so i'm not going to draw the picture because it was kind of hard drawing it so there's the image reflected over x equals e. So we're going to use a, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know we have 10, so that's 10 squared. We're missing b, we'll say that this is b, equals uh, 15 squared. So b squared is going to be 15 squared minus 10 squared, and then just find the square root. It's said to leave it in radical form, so the square root of 125 which is equal to the square root of 25 times four, excuse me, it's times five. So it's gonna be five squared to five. In triangle ABC, angle A is a right angle and angle B is 45. Find BC, well, you know this is 45. And because of the 45, 45, 90 right triangle property, this is 10, this will be 10 squared to two. Find the lengths of the missing sides of the triangle, write your answers in integers, or as decimals, so this is 45, uh, this is 45, uh, that's 90, so this is 9, so y is equal to 9, and x will be 9 squared to 2. Number 35, find the value of the variable. If your answer is not an integer, leave it in simplest radical form. So this is 9, this is 60, this is 30, 30. Remember that the shorter leg is half the hypotenuse, and the longer, line, longer leg is going to be 9 times the square root of 3. So that's going to be the value of x, 9 square root of 3. 37, uh, we have a right triangle. This is 60. This is 30. Once again, the longer leg, or the hypotenuse is 12. Uh, the short leg is 6. So the, the side that is opposite 60 degrees will be 6 square root of 3. 39, we're going to write the ratio of sine and cosine, remember what I asked you to memorize, so, ka, toa, so, so is going to be sine of A is opposite over your hypotenuse, so you look at A, what's opposite, 63, and your hypotenuse is 65, uh, cosine of A is adjacent over your hypotenuse, so you look at A, what's cosine, what's adjacent, 16, and then what is our pot do 65? 41, write the tangent ratios. So we have so, ka, toa. So tangent of y is going to be opposite over adjacent. So you look at y, what's opposite? 5. Which is, what's adjacent? 8. So now z, tangent of z, what's opposite over the adjacent? So what is the opposite measurement? It's eight. What's the adjacent five? So we have the adjacent side that we have missing and we have the hypotenuse. 
So what I would do is I'd write the mnemonic statement and what you need is a JSON hypotenuse, you know it's cosine. So you write cosine of 20 degrees equals adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 11. So to, to solve this, you'd have to multiply 11. You multiply 11 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Now make sure that in your calculator, you're in, you're in um, ra uh, not radians, but in degrees. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, so it's going to be 4. So go ahead and write your so ka toa on your paper. And so now we have to decide what do we have. So here we have the adjacent, or well, we're missing the adjacent side, and we have we have the opposite. So opposite and adjacent would be tangent. So we write tangent of 55 degrees equals 8.9 over x, opposite over adjacent. So we have x times a tangent of 55 degrees is equal to 8.9. So to isolate the x, we're going to divide by tangent of 55. 89 divided by tangent. Remember, make sure that it's in degrees. So we get 6.3. I'm going to have to go back to number 43. The actual answer is 11. Find the missing value to the nearest hundredth. Here, we're trying to find the angle. So you're going to have to use the inverse sign in your calculator. So you have 10 over 14. So when you go to your calculator, you're going to write inverse sine. And of course, it's going to give you the angle. So when we do, uh, have 10 over 14, it's going to be uh, 40, 45.58 degrees. 45.58 degrees. If we go to 49, it says find the missing value. You're going to use the inverse cosine again. It's 2 over 23. So when you go to your calculator, you're going to type in uh, trig inverse cosine, and then you have 2 divided by 23, and you get 85.01 degrees. 51, we're going to find the value of x, and what I would do is I would use sine. So, ka, so you write this statement down, and we have the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. So, you actually have cosine equals... 13 over 20. So you're going to use inverse cosine of 13 over 20. Type that into the calculator. Inverse cosine of 13 over 20. And you get 49. You get 49 degrees. Because it's around to the nearest degree, so it's 49 degrees. Okay, 53, find the length of x. So you have so, toa. So uh, we have opposite. And we have adjacent. So you notice that we're going to have to use tangent. So we have tangent of 20, 20 degrees is equal to x over 11. So you're going to multiply 11 times the tangent of 20 degrees. You get 4 centimeters. Just get in the habit of writing the mnemonic statements. We have so, ka, toa. And this is adjacent. And this is your hypotenuse. So uh, we're going to use cosine. We have cosine adjacent. Cosine of 36 degrees is adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. So we're going to go ahead and multiply. x times 1 is x. And I'll multiply 5 times cosine of 36 degrees. You get 4. Again, you get 4 feet. Number 57, you have uh, two lines that are parallel, and then we have a transversal, so this has to be 30 degrees. Uh, this is 600. Uh, this is actually 60. This is a hypotenuse, so this is a 30, 60, 90, so this will be twice 600, which is 1,200 meters. Remember the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle the shorter side is opposite 30, which is 600, and the hypotenuse, which is opposite the 90 degrees, is twice the shorter side. So that's going to be 1,200. 59, we have two lines that are parallel, and then it's also cut by transversal. So this is 25 degrees. You notice there's a right triangle, so automatically we're going to write the mnemonic statement. So ka toa, and this is adjacent, and this is opposite, so you notice we're going to use tangent. So you have tangent of 25 degrees 
equals the opposite over the adjacent side, which is 12 yards. So you're going to multiply 12 times the tangent of, of uh, 25. And you round off to the nearest tenth, so it's 5.6 yards. To approach the runway, a pilot of a small plane must begin a 9 degree descent starting from a height of 1,965. Uh, we have two lines that are parallel. This is your angle of depression, so this is also your angle of depression the same. It's going to be 9 degrees. We're looking for the hypotenuse. So this is your hypotenuse and this is your opposite. So you're going to use sine. So sine of 9 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 1,965 feet, over x, which is the hypotenuse. So you're going to multiply x times the sine of 9 degrees equals 1,965 divided by sine of 9 degrees, and let's go ahead and figure that out. So approximately the distance is 12,561.2 miles away. Correction, this is feet. So if I want to convert it to miles, I have to divide by 5,280. So that's 2.4 miles away. There's 5,280 feet in one mile. Find the length of major arc y, y, p, x. Leave your answer in terms of pi. We notice that this is 90 degrees. So the major angle is 270 out of 360. And you're looking for length. So it's going to be times 2 pi. And then the radius is 10. So part of that length is going to be 15 pi. Find the degree measure of angle 7 pi over 10. So you're going to multiply times 180 over pi. Pi's cancel. 180 divided by 10 is 18. So it's actually 7 times 18. 126 degrees. Find the degree measure of angle pi over 6. You have negative pi over 6, so you multiply times 180 over pi. Pi's cancel. 180 divided by 6 is 30, so it's negative 30. So we know that the arc length is theta. In this case, it's 8 pi over 5 equals s, which we're looking for, over 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply, and that's 5. 7 times 8, in this case, it's uh, 56 pi over equals s. So the length of s is 56 pi over 5. So once again, we know that theta is equal to s over r. So we have s over 7 is equal to theta. This is theta. 8 pi over 5. So we multiply 7 times 8, which is 56 pi over 5. And that's our value of s. The area of this circle is going to be pi radius squared. So area is equal to pi. Half of 4.1 is... 2.05, we're going to square it, and then to find the area, we're going to multiply times pi. And that gives us 13.2 square units. Write the standard equation of a circle. So this is our h, and this is our k. So we have x minus 10 squared plus y minus a negative 6, so that's positive 6, squared equals... In this case, it's r squared. In this case, it's 36. Assume the lines appear to be tangent, are tangent. So this is 90. Uh, we have, we're missing x, and we know angle p is 27. So a tangent line is going to be perpendicular to the radius, which is a right, creates a right, a right angle. So you have 27 plus 90 degrees plus x equals 180. So you have 117 plus x equals 180. So x is going to be the difference of 180 and 117, 63. AB is tangent at circle O, so this is 90. AO is 16. BC is, uh, B, C is 18, and this is 16. They want to find AB, so we have x squared plus 16 squared, and then you're going to have to add 16 plus 18. So it's going to be equal to 34 squared. So x squared is equal to 34 squared minus 16 squared. And then we're going to find the square root to find that distance. 
of AB. So let's go ahead and find the square root of 34 squared minus 16 squared. You get 30. So what I use here is I use the Pythagorean theorem, since this was a right triangle, to find the missing length of the, of the leg, okay? The measurement of arc DE is 113. The measurement of arc BC is 57, 56. And we need to find the measure of angle A. So how do we find A? We have two secants. So remember, we're going to subtract 113 degrees minus 56 degrees, and then we divide by 2. And that's going to give us a measurement of angle A. So the measure of angle A is equal to 28.5. Find the value of X. We know that the minor arc AB is 29 degrees. We know that the minor arc CD is 41. So you have 41 plus 29. And then we divide by 2. And that's going to give us X. So we have 70 over 2. So we have 35 degrees is X. The lines of the figure are tangent to the circle at A and B. Find the measure of AB for uh, the measure of angle P equals 64. So this is 64 degrees. This is X. And the major arc will be 360 degrees minus X. So with that understanding, I'm going to go ahead and remember uh, we're going to subtract 360 minus x minus x and then we divide by 2 and that will give you 64 degrees. So we have 360 minus 2x equals 2 times 64 is 128 degrees. So we subtract 360 from uh, 128 and you get negative 2x equals then you divide by 2 you get negative 232 divide by 2. So X, which is AB, is going to be 116. And the major arc is going to be 360 minus 116. So this is going to be, uh, this will be 244. And the inner one is going to be 116 degrees. AB is equal to 14. BC is equal to 10. CD is equal to 8. So to do this, it's going to be 8, which is DC, times the distance of the entire secant. So it's x plus 8 equals 10 times the entire distance of the secant, which is 10 plus 14. We're talking about this entire distance. You're adding both of them. And here you're adding both of them, but since you don't know x, it's going to be x plus 8. So now you have 8x plus 64. You do the distributive property. 10 times 24 is 240. Subtract 64 from 240, and so the last step is to divide by 8. So you have 240 minus 64, and then divide by 8. In this case, it's 176, and then divide by 8, and you get 22. So the distance of x is 22. For 95, you have two uh, chords, and you're going to have 5 times x equals 7 times uh, 24. So we have 7 times 24, which gives you 160, 168. So you have 5x equals 168. Now to divide, next you divide by 5. You divide by 5 and you get 33.6. Now when you have a tangent and a secant line, to find the value of x here, it's going to be x, which is a line that is tangent, is going to be squared, equals 9 times 17. So you're going to have to find the square root of x squared. Find the square root of the product of 9 and 17. So it's 153. So let's go ahead and find the square root of 153. Yeah, 12.3 is your answer, 12.4. So remember that when you have a tangent line like this, it's going to be this line, which is x, x squared. And then you're going to multiply times the product of the two segments, or the measurements, 9 and 17. AD is tangent to circle O and D, at D, and find you have to find AB, so this is X, so it's going to be 8 times X equals 14 squared, and then whatever you get from 14 squared, you have to divide by 8. So let me do that in the calculator. 14 squared, 196 divided by 8, so that distance is 24.5.
You are planning to use ceramic tile to design your new bathroom. The tiles are blue and white, equilateral triangles. So that's important. That means that all the sides are congruent. You decide to arrange the blue tiles in a hexagonal shape. If the side of each tile is five centimeters, what will be the exact area of the hexagonal shape? So this right here is going to be uh, 2.5 square to three because this is 30, 60, 90. And they said they want exact. So the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height, but we have six. So whatever I get as an area, I multiply it times six. So it's gonna be one half of six is three times, what is the base measurement? Five. What is the height? 2.5 times the square root of three. So I'm gonna multiply three times five, which is 15 times 2.5, so that the area is gonna be 37.5 square root of three, that's exact. If you want it in decimal form, you'd have to multiply it times the square root of three, but they said they wanted the exact measure. A jewelry box, a jewelry store buys small boxes in which they wrap items they sell. The diagram below shows one of the boxes, find the lateral area, and we have to find the surface area to the nearest whole number. So. The lateral area of a prism, we have S is equal to P, which is the perimeter of the base, times the height. So we have 14 plus 14, uh, 5 and 5, which gives us 10. So that's the perimeter of the base, times the height, which is 214. So I'm going to go and let my calculator do the work. I get approximately 81 square centimeters. So now to find my total height, total, it's going to be uh, the lateral. In this case, it's 81 centimeters squared plus the area of the two bases. So I'm going to multiply two because there's two bases and it's 14 by, f by five centimeters. So I'm going to multiply 14 times five, which gives us 70 times two. Since there's a, the top and the bottom, that's 140 plus 81. So your total area is 221 approximately 221 square centimeters so for the cylinder we have to find the total area and leave in terms of pi so for the cylinder it's going to be 2 times pi times the radius times the height that's the lateral area plus the two area of the basis so it's going to be 2 pi r squared so i'm just going to substitute s equals 2 times pi the radius is going to be 6 the height is 17, and then we have 2 times pi. The radius is 6, and remember you have to square it. So we have, I'm going to let the calculator do the work. So we have 2 times 16 times 17, 2 times 16 times 17. So I get 5, 544 square centimeters, right? Plus 36 times 2 is 72 pi square centimeters. So I just have to add 72 to 545, 544, and I got 616. 616 pi square centimeters. So to find the, the total surface area of this square pyramid, it's gonna be one half. And since I have a square, it's gonna be five feet by four. And then the slant height is seven, plus the area of the base, which is five times five, so one half of four is two. Two times five is 10. So it's 70 square feet plus 25 square feet. So this is your lateral and this is your, top, your bottom. So your total surface area is 95 square feet. Find the surface area of the cone. So the cone, we have S equals pi times the radius times l plus pi radius squared so you have pi the radius is seven centimeters the slant height is 27 plus pi times seven squared so i'm going to go ahead and let the calculator do the work so the total surface area will be 747.7 squared centimeters so let's find the volume of this prism. So the volume 
is equal to the area of the base times the height. So it's going to be 16 times 9 times 4. So the volume is going to be 576 cubic feet. To find the volume of this prism, it's going to be the area of the base times the height. So the volume is the area of the base, which is a triangle. So it's 1 half times the base of the triangle times the height. And this is the height of the uh, prism. Now, we know that the base is a triangle, and we know that this length is going gonna, is gonna to cut this in half. So that's 7. This is 14. And this is 60. This is 30. So that's a 30, 60, 90. So that will be 7 square root of 3. So uh, I can now find the volume. So the volume is equal to 1 half. The base measurement is 14 times 7 square root of 3. And then I got to multiply by the height, which is 25. So I'm just going to go ahead and place that in the calculator. I get 2,121.76 cubic, cubic yards. So the hard part of this problem was to find the height of the triangle which we use our understanding of 30, 60, 90, that's going to be 7 square root of 3. Find the volume of the square pyramid. So volume equals one third times the area of the base times the height. So volume equals one third times the area of the base, which is going to be 11 times 11 times the height, which is 15. One third of 15 is 5, so you have 5 times 121 which gives you 605 cubic centimeters. I will find the volume of the right cone. It says V is equal to one third times the area of the base times the height. So we have V is equal to one third pi R squared, which is nine squared times the height, which is 26. So we have one third times 11 times 9 squared times 26 it gives you 7722 cubic meters so we have an oblique cone we're going to still use the same formula so it's one third times the area of the base times the height so the volume equals one third times the base is going to be pi we have to divide 13 by 2 and then you have to square it pi r squared times the height which is 16. 13 divided by 2 is 7.5, I think. So V equals 1 third times pi 7.5 squared times 16. So I have 1 third pi 7.5 squared times 16, which is the height. 942. 942.5 cubic inches.